Are you sick of being stuck at home during this pandemic? Well, things could be a lot worse. You could be stuck in yonder in the movie Vivarium. My name's Kevin. This is my channel, The Art of Horror, and welcome to the show. Today I'll be drawing an image in inks inspired by the movie Vivarium. Whilst trying my best to explain the movie. Directed by Lorcan Finnegan and adapted from a story by film screenwriter Garrett Shanley. Vivarium follows a young couple in love, Jesse Eisenberg and Imogen Poot, playing the characters of Gemma and Tom. Gemma and Tom are happily in love. Gemma, a primary school teacher, and Tom, a handyman, are in the market to buy a new home. On a whim, they visit a display home office for a housing project known as Yonder. The start of the movie creepily shows a cuckoo pushing a bird out of a nest and taking its place, so the original bird's mother will take care of the cuckoo. Gemma explains to one of her students that this is the way nature is. It's mostly good, but sometimes bad things can happen. Now, in interviews I have read with the director, he said the interpretation of the movie is very open to personal interpretation. So any theories or explanations that I come up with here technically could not be right or wrong. They're just my gut feelings and instincts. From the moment Gemma and Tom enter the display home office, they meet the most interesting character, Martin. Something is very obviously off with Martin, as often his body language doesn't match up, he smiles way too much, and is extremely keen to sell Tom and Gemma a home in yonder. From the moment they walk through this door, the whole mood and lighting and feeling of this movie changes. My own personal theory is, from the moment they walk through that door, they've fallen into a trap. They agree to a tour of Yonder to see the new homes, which I find personally a little odd in itself, as it's quite late in the afternoon, obviously at the end of a working day, and most couples would say, we'd like to have a look, but maybe we'll have a look tomorrow, or let's book something for the weekend, but they immediately decide to drive off following Martin. It's almost as if they're hypnotised, or they don't have a choice. They so easily and readily agree to this tour. After a surreal, scenic and beautiful drive, they finally reach the housing estate. Straight away, things escalate to surreal levels of oddness. The oddest thing is Tom and Gemma don't react to the odd things. They give each other the occasional sideways glance, but nothing is actually ever said. All the homes in Yonder are exactly the same. They're all exactly the horrible same colour scheme of green. It is definitely not a pretty place. Every cloud in the sky is identical. Martin gives them a subsequent tour of the home. Number 9. I'm not sure if the number 9 has a particular significance. Other than giving the home an easily identifiable marker. What is odd is as the house is number 9 yet it's obviously in the middle of thousands of identical homes. Whilst mid-tour, Tom and Gemma are abandoned by Martin. Only they and their car are left in the neighbourhood. A completely empty, huge neighbourhood. Once they realise Martin has abandoned the tour, they decide to leave. Only leaving this neighbourhood is not an easy task. No matter what direction they drive in, no matter what corners they take, it always brings them back to number nine. After many hours of driving around and trying to escape the neighbourhood, they finally give up and decide to crash at number nine. They open a complimentary bottle of champagne and strawberries to discover that neither has any taste. They have the look of the food and drink, but none of the substance, much like the rest of the neighbourhood. Instead of driving around in circles all day, Tom decides to take a different tact and uses a ladder that he brought with him as a handyman to climb to the top of the roof to get a better view. 
and all he can see in every direction are the same cardboard cutout, green ugly houses, stretching for eternity. As time passes, they discover that boxes of food and supplies are delivered to them out the front of the house on the road. They never see who delivers the boxes. They just mysteriously appear in vacuum sealed packs. All of the food with the same bland, tasteless look of real food, but none of the substance of real food. I don't know about you, but I myself would have been freaking out on the first night. And the level of calmness at which they deal with this is quite interesting. It is obviously getting to them. The longer time passes. And it also gets to the point where they decide to make a dash for it. If they follow the sun, they think they may find a way out. And yet, they still always end up at number nine. I think at this point it becomes obvious to them that they're prisoners of some kind. One day, one of the deliveries arrives, and instead of the usual food package, they open the box and discover a newborn baby, covered in a slimy gel. There is a message on the box. The message reads, raise the child and go free. Weeks pass, and it's obvious the boy is growing at a phenomenal rate, as they are marking his growth on the wall, like a normal family would, but he's grown from a baby to a boy at such a fast rate, it's completely unnatural. And is obviously freaking Tom and Gemma out. Earlier in the film, Martin mimics Gemma. Not just mimicking, but copies her voice precisely. And later we see this boy has an extremely unnatural voice and also has the same gift of mimicking and mimics Tom and Gemma constantly. It becomes obvious to me at this point, he is learning about them. He is learning their ways, their speech patterns, their thought patterns. The other creepy thing about the boy is he dresses and acts exactly like Martin, the salesman from the office. Now, I don't want to go into the story details too much more here, but I would like to go into the theories of what I think is going on. With the biggest, most obvious clue, of course, the cuckoo scene at the start of the movie. The boy is not what he seems. That becomes extremely evident in a scene where Gemma tricks him, as mimicking is one of his favourite games. Gemma uses psychology on him to mimic the person who delivers the boxes, at which point she receives an extremely alien response. Much like a frog, the boy's throat swells up to emit a horrid sound. He is also watching constantly alien signals on the television. And Gemma also discovers a book full of symbology and drawings completely alien to them. Though some of the drawings in the book are blatantly obvious and childlike and simplistic in their explanation of the diagrams themselves. The whole time, Tom is slowly losing the plot and digs a hole in the garden as opposed to running around the neighbourhood like a mad chook with its head cut off. His new strategy to dig straight down. The whole time Tom is digging, he's becoming sicker and discovers a body in a bag at the bottom of the hole he is digging. And here is my theory. Gemma follows the boy who is now a teenager, who mysteriously disappears each day. And it's at this point she decides she's going to murder him, obviously seeing him as a threat and a possible way out. When this murder plan goes wrong, the teenage boy scuttles off in a most unhuman manner. He lifts up part of the curb like it was a cartoon, a non-reality, and slips into the crawl space. Gemma follows him into this hole. Whilst giving chase, she discovers many number nines. Each house holding a different couple, and each house raising their own unnatural child. Each house also showing different outcomes, as of course, as humans, we would all act differently in such circumstances. Some people have committed suicide, others have given up mentally completely. None of these worlds are exactly the same, all represented 
through different colors. Now, here's what I think is going on. I think we're seeing fourth dimensional beings doing what they have to do to survive. And in this case, it's using human beings to raise them and teach them about their surroundings to blend in. I think each timeline or dimension has its own Martin, its own yonder neighborhood to survive. Finding suitable parents and tricking them into a fourth dimensional place to raise a child from scratch, to teach the child the ways of the human world, where it can begin the cycle all over again. The being that Martin is seems to have an extremely short lifespan. And while we don't know how much time has exactly passed, based on how fast the boy was growing, I don't think much time has passed at all. As we see the teen version at the end of the film walk in to replace Martin. It may just well be an invasion en masse, but not what we think in the traditional sense. Maybe it's an invasion across multi-dimensional timelines. I've heard theories that people think they may be in a game, but to me that doesn't wash as they travel back to the store at the end of the movie. If it was a game, Martin wouldn't need to age. He wouldn't need to be replaced. Nor would the analogy of a cuckoo be relevant if it were a game. The fact that Tom also, when he digs the hole in the backyard, actually finds a body, which to me is obviously himself and Gemma, suggests to me multiple timeline crossovers. This has happened before and will happen again between all timelines. Vivarium is one of those movies like Donnie Darko where I don't think there is one simple explanation. And that is why I really love this film. It's just the sort of film you could have a cup of coffee or a beer and discuss for hours on end, coming up with all sorts of crazy theories. And the deeper that you dig, pardon the pun, the more you could uncover. I'm hearing some people call this movie dull, and I would totally disagree. I actually think it's one of the best films I've watched this year. In fact, three films this year have really stood out to me. That is VFW, The Hunt, and Vivarium. And I'm definitely going to be talking about VFW next. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers. So I just want to make this promise. Once I hit 1,000 subscribers, I would really like to do a room tour of my workspace and a face reveal for you guys, just so you get to meet me. So please let me know below your own crazy theories on Vivarium. There is no right or wrong when it comes to this film, so please go your wildest. I would love to hear it. If you agree with me, great. If you don't, doesn't matter. But I do highly recommend this film. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. This has been Kevin for The Art of Horror. Goodbye for now. Rate, comment, subscribe.